In this video we're gonna have a look at AMD and the earnings reaction. So yesterday after uh, market close, uh, the, actually the stock was kind of going down 4-5% to uh, immediately after the earnings release, but then it kind of rebounded, uh, rebounded kind of, I don't know, half an hour later. And you can see that today the market really liked the earnings and we are up almost 10%. I always like to start from the financial outlook from the previous quarter. So in the previous quarter, they were like guiding for 5.7 billion in revenue, plus minus 300 million. They also guided for 51% gross margin and operating expenses of 1.65 billion US dollar. So now if we look now at the, those respective guided numbers and see if they actually managed to uh, came close or even exceed or uh, yeah, let's see how they did. So you can see that the guidance of 5.7 billion in revenue, they actually exceeded it by 100 million, so not a huge beat, but I mean, we, we take it. And um, also going back to the other number there, gross margin, so if you look for the gross margin number, non-gap, you have to remember that AMD's financial outlook are based on non-gap uh, for the gross margin. And you can see here that 51%, and this is actually what yeah they guided for. And the last one, operating expenses, so you can see here, Operating expenses at uh, just below 1.7 billion US dollar and the guidance was at 1.65 So I think this shows that yeah, the company is, uh, is, is quite manageable to To have a good guidance and uh, or accurate guidance in that sense, which I think is kind of yeah Mostly since me since I've been following uh, AMD in the past six seven years I think they mostly actually have really good guidance and in those cases that they have done, they didn't have an accurate guidance. They basically nine times out of ten exceeded the guidance uh, by quite a bit. So nothing to complain here. So yeah, let's have a look more uh, closer look into the data center revenue, which is also I've spoken previously about that this is the most important part for AMD's business going forwards. And uh, preferably, I would like to see a bigger number here in terms of revenue. I think. Um, would you have asked me last year at the same time? I would definitely expect it at least in the double digit uh, or like 2 billion US dollar revenue for Q3 and maybe 2.5 billion for Q4. Let's see about Q4, but for the Q3, I mean, it's not bad. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's bad, but uh, as you will see when we will compare to Nvidia later in the video, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's nowhere near enough in my opinion. But for the stock price, it, it's it's bare minimum, I would say. And you can see that uh, here, uh, compared to last year, the operating margin went a bit down. So it's actually not a good look in my opinion. But yeah, not a worse result here. On the client side, you can see that uh, it's quite a big difference compared to the same quarter of uh, 2022. Uh, I mean, it's almost 50% higher revenue. And the operating margin is uh, back to positive. So uh, yeah, we take this, it's really good. I think uh, in this scenario here is also that uh, Intel, the main competition in this segment, uh, launched their new 14th gen. And uh, looking at the technical reviews, it's quite evident that AMD's lineup is definitely competitive here. And even if Intel would be able to take market share, all AMD need is to just uh, uh, yeah cut the price a bit uh, and they would still be competitive. But I don't think even they need to do that. And Zen 5 is gonna launch very soon, like within six months probably. So you shouldn't worry about this segment. Uh, yeah, and also lastly about the clients segment, I think like if you consider uh, since Corona and uh, most people were at home and uh, everyone was buying uh, different technical stuff like computer, laptops, iPads, uh, left, right and center. So I don't think we are in the most, uh, let's say in the most bullish market for this part of the segment. So this part of AMD's business. So uh, where they show now like one and a half billion uh, revenue in this segment, I think it's really good numbers here. And now to the gaming segment, uh, it's a bit confusing to be honest, because some people argue that shouldn't this also be gaming, but this is just a way that AMD decides how to share their business. Anyway, so this is more, I think, um, the PlayStation 5 and uh, uh, I think also the yeah, the Radeon GPUs. Uh, so yeah, and we can see that the revenue is basically as last year, slightly below, and the operating margin is uh, yeah up, so not, not too bad, not too bad. And then finally embedded, I think this is mostly a lot of the, the uh, legacy Xilinx business and uh, 
I mean, it's a really strong, healthy component to AMD as a company. I mean, you can see still like 1.2 billion revenue. Although this shows also there's not a huge growth, uh, actually it's less than last year, but they do have good uh, operating margin. So I think this is a really, really healthy business for AMD. And you can see compare the operating margin for this segment embedded and compare it to the gaming segment at 14%. And then you go back to client at 10 and then look at the data center at 19. Now, this is the, probably the segment that will challenge the, seg the Xilinx segment, uh, the embedded one, in the future. And I would expect, if everything goes well with MI300 and the successor MI400, that this number will go up to close to 50%, if not more, since we know that NVIDIA is enjoying like 70, if not 80% margins there. So yeah, but that's up to the yeah, future. future. So as we did in the uh, in the beginning of the video, you can see now we have to have a look at the guidance for the next quarter, Q4. Now, in my to be honest, I've been expecting a bit higher numbers here. I think like um, I would definitely would have expected uh, closer to seven billion in the more uh, bullish scenario. But I mean, the guide was six point one billion and then plus minus three hundred. Let's say they get six point three. And yeah, that is probably the second best. Uh, they say, yeah, I, I think quite confident that if they get the, the revenue at 6.1 billion or anything above that, it's the second best uh, earnings, uh, yeah, quarter quarterly earnings for AMD in their history. So again, it's not a bad number. It's just uh, <laughs> we have to always compare to Nvidia these days. And if you look at, for example, their uh, data center revenue only in the past quarter, like Q2. Uh, 2024 and then Q3 and they have like now in tens of billions only from data center but yeah, Nvidia is a different beast when it comes to uh, when it comes to AI and data center at this stage and they had a head start on AMD so yeah let's see what happens in, in the, the coming uh, 12 to 18 months and then they, they also guide for a slight increase in gross margin and operating expenses doesn't seem to be increasing a whole lot. If you remember the 1.65 billion that they guided for in the Q2 earnings for this quarter. So yeah, I don't think, uh, I actually think they will probably exceed the guidance at 66.1, probably 6.2 or 3. So it's not bad, but yeah, it's not optimal either. Now the interesting part here is though, if you, if you summarize the revenue here, you can see that in the Q1 we had 5.4 billion same in q2 and then now 5.8 in q q3 which sums up to 16.6 billion us dollar of revenue right now for the first three quarters now for 2022 the company had three 23.6 billion in revenue which means that the q4 should be at least 7 billion us dollar in order to match the last year's revenue and uh, yeah, it's it's. I I think it's a tall order. Like if if AMD is saying that they are guiding for six point five billion plus minus three hundred, I don't expect at this stage that they will match the yeah the, those numbers that I mentioned here seven billion. So yeah, it's a bummer to be honest, but it's not bad, especially if you consider that AMD in twenty twenty two actually had a like absolute humongous revenue beat. So. I, I wouldn't say that this number is bad, but I, I I have to be honest and I would have definitely expected a bit more, especially since the way that the, the leadership of the company spoke about the, the data center at the beginning of the year, in which they were very confident that the second half of the year would be a much, much better for data center. But let's see, they might beat in Q4 and uh, we might, maybe we are going to be very close to 7 million. Who knows? And the most important part for me though is not only revenue. Remember, not all revenue are equal. If you remember this slide here, uh, and if you look at the operating margin, for example, for the embedded segment, compared to the gaming and client, which is in 10 and 9, uh, 14, and then also on the data center, which will probably be better in the future. Yeah, so again, not all the revenue is uh, equal and I would really, really look forward to see what the data center revenue will be in the next quarter in Q4. 
and doing the same kind of math you can see that right now we were at 4.2 billion combined for the data center of this year so 2023 and last year they had at 6 billion which needs which means that we need 1.8 billion in order to match last year so i think we will be able to match uh, 1.8 billion in data center for the next quarter i think this one is more doable i think actually i, I, I would i would think that we are going to get very close to this number here especially considering some of the comments that lisa had in the in the discussions after the earnings release uh, and to put it in context uh, you can see that i've written here that the only quarter that is substantially better than this q3 of 2023 was the second quarter of last year which was at 6.6 .6 billion us dollar and that was the all-time best quarter for amd you can see here so at 6.6 .6 billion us dollar and we now uh, had a 5.8 which is basically in the same in the second spot i would say in the yeah shared second spot with the first quarter of 2022 and if as as we said earlier like if if they manage to hit the guidance at 6.1 maybe exceed it slightly at 6.23 we will be like very close to the best quarter ever amd had so it's not it's definitely i'm not trying to say that this is a bad bad picture for amd it's just like maybe some of us including myself i have to be honest and expected kind of a bit more on the mi300 at this stage and you can see that lisa said that they now expect data center gpu revenue to be approximately 400 million in q4 and again remember the, this important wording there data center gpu revenue because previously those numbers we spoke about on data center is mostly from their cpu and different derivatives there so yeah i mean 400 million is still good and then uh, they expect that to exceed 2 billion for the full year of 2024 as revenue ramps up throughout the year and uh, that kind of growth should make uh, mi300 the fastest ever product ramp to 1 billion in amd sales history now to be honest as you all know or most of you know probably that lisa su as ceo is kind of conservative and when she says 2 billion i think this is like that kind of revenue that you are 100 or like 99 percent sure they will be able to get i wouldn't be surprised at all if that uh, yeah the, the number would be much much higher maybe four five six billion God knows, but I think yeah, I I wouldn't put it past them to actually have a huge beat next year on data center revenue in the second half, especially like reading the rumors of the industry insiders. I think yeah, there's a good possibility, but it's I have to hold my hands up, and I think there is absolutely no way that they will be able to exceed ten to fifteen billion US dollar revenue only in data center GPU. I I think yeah, otherwise they would probably have told that. So yeah. But still, I mean, if, if they manage to come in at five, six billion additional revenue with gross margins of 60, 50, 60, 70 percent, it's going to be a huge, huge impact on companies uh, bottom line. But just to put it into perspective, so as you saw earlier that Nvidia is also not only are they actually selling huge numbers, huge quantities of data center product, they're also having uh, this thing with ramping up so you can see that on this uh, article here that tsmc boost uh, covos uh, packaging uh, ma machine orders by 30 percent and with surging ai chip demand they mention of course amd are here as well but also mostly nvidia's customer as well as broadcom so i think the lion share of those additional capacity in manufacturing manufacturing will go to nvidia and this is why i yeah some might see some might see the numbers that amd guided now for for the data center especially this paragraph here i think some people might be a bit disappointed because i mean what's one or two or three or four billion in an ocean where uh, uh, nvidia as the, the main competition ha like entering the tens of billions of revenue per quarter only in data center and then, to be honest, this is the old number for the previous Q2. And in the Q3, they, I think they had like something close to 12 or 13 billion in data center. So yeah, NVIDIA, and look at these numbers, they're like scary. Like look at how fast they jumped from like stagnating at just around three to just below four billion. And then boom, like in two quarters, they went uh, from like three and a half billion to 10 and now 13. And 
at this rate, I mean, again, considering the TSMC's increased capacity for the AI chips, yeah, I think NVIDIA might even exceed 15, possibly 20 billion one of the uh, second uh, half quarters of next year. So to summarize, I think I'm not actually disappointed. I think, I think the earnings report for AMD was fairly good. And especially the outlook is at least above 6.1 billion probably. So the gross margin goes in the right direction. And yeah, if we are patient, I think this is still a good investment. So let's see and uh, please follow the channel. And uh, if you're interested into uh, the analysis of how, how this uh, TSMC manufacturing uh, will affect AMD and NVIDIA, please look at my previous videos. So yeah, thank you and see you in the next one.